So the focus for white genetic survival has to be on the male, and then it has to be on the males who have the greatest genetic potential to cause white genetic annihilation. Are you all following me? So Neely Fuller has told us that we're dealing with a system and the system to maintain the power equation of white power over a relative non-white powerlessness. Now he doesn't say for the purpose of genetic survival. That's Francis Welsing's contribution. Okay, but I say this power equation is the white genetic survival power equation necessity. And the system functions in economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. Now we are in a temple called the Shrine of the Black Madonna. Now we can go back in history and the paleontologists and anthropologists are telling us that black people were the parents, the first people. I'm not talking about some higher primate. I'm talking about human beings. Black people are the first people. Black people are the mothers and fathers of everybody on this planet. The first people to know about God. The first people to be mathematicians, architects, scientists, philosophers, to know about astronomy. But when the people who classify themselves as white started taking over, they knew of the critical importance in the area of religion of telling people, the whole world of colored people, that God was white. Now that was, I say, a critically important step, and sometimes I give the people who run white supremacy some grades. They can get A+. Because <laughs> that was a very strategic move. Do you see, to say, well, wait a minute, it's more of them than us. So first, if we conquer them, then we can brainwash them and have them think that they are the image of God and having the people of color praying to white day and night to love them and to save them. And, oh, God, why did you make me black? <laughs> I'll just tell you all a little story. When I was very young, and I'm baptized Baptist and christened AME. That's to satisfy both sides of the family. <laughs> My grandfather was deacon, chairman of the deacon and trustee board at Olivet Baptist Church in Chicago for 35 years. So I'm in church, you know, before you can see straight. But I say this was a strategic move in having, you know, your Sunday school every Sunday from the time you can breathe. And I remember looking at the Sunday school car. We used to get Sunday school cars with a little picture of Jesus bowing down in Gethsemane, you know. And so I remember in our pantry... You know, a little room with a lot of shelves and food, and it would be a big box of Quaker oats on the bottom big shelf. So I remember going in there one day and just looking at the Quaker oats box, and I said to myself, that must be God. 
because he just looked like an older Jesus. I didn't discuss this with my parents. I had just concluded this on my own. Here's Jesus looking young on the Sunday school card, and here's this white man with this long white hair. And I just said, especially since you sang the grace and we thank him for this food, this oatmeal, so that had been my conclusion. Let me tell you a secret. Anybody who was taught that this white man was the son of God, their brain computer had already jumped ahead that God had to be white. Do you understand what I'm saying? So whether you were ever questioned about it, given a lecture about it, your brain computer had jumped ahead instantaneously and made the conclusion. But I say that truth is very difficult to hide. It manifests itself, it surfaces, no matter how you try to suppress it. So I said if we even look at the name Jesus and break it down into Ebonics, then we have just us. <laughs> so while we're waiting for somebody else, It's just us that have to get ourselves together. But I say that truth is very difficult to hide. It manifests itself, it surfaces, no matter how you try to suppress it. So I said if we even look at the name Jesus, and break it down into Ebonics, then we have just us. <laughs> so while we're waiting for somebody else, it's just us that have to get ourselves together. You see, but I say, if you begin to understand what I'm saying about what racism as white supremacy is not racism and white supremacy. Neely Fuller informs us racism is white supremacy, and white supremacy is racism. And what I'm saying is that we have fought as black people dealing with this problem generation after generation after generation after generation, that it was just a question of, well, white people have to be taught to love. I remember standing in my home being a little girl, just the height of the table. My parents were reading the Chicago Defender, my grandmother was there, and they were kind of whispering about a black man having been lynched. You know, they would talk softly, and then if you were a child, you knew to listen carefully. <laughs> so I said to my grandmother, well, Granny, why would they do it? And my grandmother said, well, some people just have to act ugly. But beginning to understand what racism is in terms of the demographics and the genetics on the planet, that this is what people who classify themselves as white felt they had to do for their survival. And it is not logical to expect people who designed a system consciously and or subconsciously for their survival to undo that system. Do you understand? 
that doesn't make sense. And this is what we have been thinking, Dr. Martin Luther King, in all of his genius and in all of his courage, talked about love. Do you see? But if all of the nine-tenths people on the planet, plus the one-tenth white people, if everybody, I'll put this in a heart, <laughs> if everybody was to love, and people were not paying attention to color, what would happen? The white would disappear because it is recessive. It would disappear. Now, I've talked to white people. I've talked to audiences of white people. And I say, do you want your children to be colored? See, a lot of black people say they have white friends. But that's as long as they're just laughing and talking. They don't ever ask their white friends serious questions. But I've asked white people, do you want your children to be colored? Do you want your grandchildren to be colored? Do you want your great-grandchildren to be colored? Do you want your great-great-great-great-grandchildren to be colored? I'm polite and they're polite. What do they say? No. No. Most everyone knows that Dr. King was a courageous Christian minister committed to the nonviolent pursuit of freedom for all people. In this pursuit, he went to jail 29 times. Nothing new so far, but prepare yourself for some stunning surprises. James Earl Ray, a petty criminal who died in 1998 and who, according to the official story, shot Dr. King, in fact, did not shoot Dr. King even though he pleaded guilty in 1969. That's right, James Earl Ray was not, absolutely without any question, not the killer. This footage of Dexter King shaking hands with James Earl Ray speaks volumes. Dexter and the other members of the King family have persevered ever since Dr. King's death to learn the truth about what happened and to make that truth known. They are convinced Ray was not the shooter. Ray's guilty plea comes about on the advice of a lawyer who approaches Ray and offers to represent him. It turns out this lawyer has connections with the true killers. The lawyer tells Ray that a guilty plea will make Ray famous and help him get off with a light sentence. Always easily led, Ray writes out what he's told to. And by the way, it's a guilty plea, not a confession. These facts are found in a book just out the best single book on the assassination, an act of state, the execution of Martin Luther King. On the basis of the guilty plea, Ray is sentenced to 99 years in prison. Ray realizes he's been duped. Three days after arriving in the penitentiary, he moves for his guilty plea to be set aside and that he be given a trial. But stalling by government officials denies him that for the rest of his life. To his dying day, he insists he did not kill Dr. King. Pepper's book includes a full account of the extensive civil trial into Dr. King's death held in Memphis, Tennessee in 1999. <coughs> that there was such a trial may be a surprise to you also. The family suit names as defendants co-conspirators, both named and unknown. The trial is not about money. The family seeks $100 damages. The trial is about the truth. The trial lasts almost a month. Seventy witnesses are heard. A jury of six black and six white persons takes just one hour to arrive at a guilty verdict against, quote, the co-conspirators consisting of the named defendant, Lloyd Jowers, and those that the defendant named in his response, namely the United States government, the state of Tennessee, the city of Memphis, and Memphis Police Department, James Earl Ray, Earl Clark, and Frank Liberto, unquote. Earl Clark, now deceased, in the Memphis Police Department. Frank Liberto was a mafia kingpin. Conspirators within the U.S. government, according to the trial and the book, include, quote, J. Edgar Hoover and the FBI, Richard Helms and the CIA, and the military, unquote.
The reason all this information probably surprises you is that the mainstream media effectively boycotted the trial. As Pepper writes, the silence following these shocking revelations was deafening. Like the pattern during all the investigations of the assassination throughout the years. All right, welcome back to the African History Network show. We're gonna we're gonna continue that clip. Uh, when we get done with our interview with Dr. Wilson. That was a fascinating clip dealing with the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. But on the line right now, we have with us one of our Grandmaster Scholar Warriors. Uh, I've had her on the African History Network show twice before. It's always a pleasure to have her on to be in a presence to talk to her. I'm talking about none other than the one and only Dr. Francis Cress Wilson. Hotel, my sister. How you doing tonight? Good evening. How are you? Mm-hmm. I'm fantastic, sister. And uh, I was just at, right before the show. I was just at a planning meeting for African Liberation Day, so everybody is excited about you coming to Detroit. Excited to to hear from you, and uh, you know it's always uh, you know always a pleasure uh, to talk to you and to be in your presence. So I'm I'm fantastic. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Definitely, sister. Well, you know, there's a lot going on, and, you know, just when you think things have calmed down somewhat, they, <laughs> something happens and, and things jump off. And, you know, tonight, um, I've already let the people know you're going to be here in uh, uh, about your lecture, and I'm going to give them some more details about that as we go further into the, the, the um, segment here tonight. But I really wanted to talk to you about, Donald Sterling scandal in a culture of white supremacy, and the and the reason why is because um, when when we hear people like say a Donald Sterling it doesn't have to be him specifically but just someone like that when we hear him say something ignorant or what have you we some people may write it off as this person just being a bigot or this person being a racist something like that but. Donald Sterling, in his um, the, the famous 10-minute uh, segment of the telephone conversation that he had with the Stiviano, he also talked about a culture, and he said, this is the way the culture is. Basically, or I think this way the culture. the culture. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And, and, and personally, the, the silver lining of the cloud is I think he did us a big favor to admit that that culture exists and it affects the way people think. <laughs> well, you and I are on the same page. Yeah. Uh, because I I call it the Sterling Silver Siviano <laughs> affair. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I say that I I'm just so pleased that mm-hmm. it took place, and the way that I look at that is that it was a truth offering. Yes. Because, see, there's so much, in other words, the major dynamic in this area of the world is the denial of racism. Mm Mm-hmm, yes. Do, Do you see? And so the media denies it, white people deny it, Many black people deny that, you know, why do we have to talk about racism? Racism is not a problem anymore. And just like you said, it keeps popping up because truth crushed to earth will always rise because it is reality. Truth is reality. Reality is truth. And so these events keep coming up. In spite of all the effort, you know, it's like a big elephant under the rug, and no matter how many people try to crush and keep the elephant from stirring, Mm -hmm. the rug continues to rumple. And so I say this was a profound truth offering, a really profound truth offering, because it was a continuous statement of racism, white supremacy, at the same time the denial that this is what I am. Absolutely. You know, my central, all of my work is based on trying to understand racism, white supremacy, and as a psychiatric physician, 
help black people understand racism, white supremacy, because I say it's key to our mental health. Mm -hmm. This is the dynamic that is happening. This is why black people greet each other, say, hey, what's happening? What's happening? Because we don't understand what's going on. Do you see, why is it that we find ourselves always back in the same place? We thought we had achieved voting rights, and now we're circling around and talking about trying to get voting assured voting rights again. We thought we had achieved school integration. And what do we find ourselves? The children are being more poorly educated than ever in the history. Mm -hmm. Schools are closing. Do you see, every problem that we give a name to that we think we have solved, it comes back and hits us in the face because the problems are symptoms of the total system of racism and white supremacy. But that is consistently being denied. And so Donald Sterling, I'm sure he doesn't, you know, he doesn't know he made more than a multi-billion dollar offering to black people. Right. With his statements and the truth of what it is that he didn't know was spilling out of his mouth. Right. But there it is on record. And so you have the media, all the people, the white people in the media, you know, scuffling around and calling him a racist, but they themselves refuse to talk about racism. Absolutely, absolutely. And so this was a gift. And so black people all over this area of the world and all over the world should start talking and consistently talk about, no matter how the court proceedings work out. Absolutely. The Sterling Silver Siviano revelations. <laughs> I'm going to have to remember that. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. See, all and those you... S's are mm-hmm. important. It's like one can say the SS. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is, this is a wonderful offering. Meaning that truth, even though you might find the truth uncomfortable, but truth is always a greater benefit than the denial or the pretense that something doesn't exist. If you can confront truth, and I say that truth, to be able to look at truth, is also a measure of self-respect. Yes. Do You see, no matter how difficult it is, the willingness to look at it means that you are achieving a higher level of respect for self. And I say self-respect is more powerful than a nuclear weapon. Mm. Mm. Well, See, this, you know... is, this is also the missing ingredient. Okay. Because for a group of people, the people who structured the system of racism, white supremacy, local, national, global, Mm -hmm. one of the critical things that was essential because that people who classify themselves as white are a tiny minority of the people on this planet. Fewer than one-tenth. The vast majority of the people are black, brown, red, and yellow. And so when the people who classify themselves as white begin to come out of Europe and circumnavigate the planet, and they found that the majority of people were people of color. And when the men, white men had sexual relations with the women of color, they realized that all the children looked like their mothers, that white could be genetically annihilated, even though they didn't talk in genetic terms, but they could see that white disappears. And so their whole effort for the past 500 years has been the effort for white genetic survival, even though they can call it by different names. They can call it imperialism. They can call it capitalism. They can call it colonialism. They can give different names to it. Right. But bottom line, it is a total system, and this is what Neely Fuller has helped us understand from the time he laid out 
that racism is white supremacy. There's no other racism. There could be people of color with attitudes, but racism is a power structure and a power dynamic that operates in economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. And so from the time they recognized that they were a tiny minority that could disappear, genetically disappear, in the sea of the global non-white majority, they have this system in operation. And essential to the operation was the destruction of the self-respect for people of color and of black people in particular because black has the greatest genetic potential to cause white genetic annihilation. And so that's why all people of color learn. If you're black, get back, brown, stick around, yellow, mellow, white, right. That's the color code for white genetic survival. And so, you know, people think, oh, no, that just, you know, they just think that it's the darker color. It's not just the darker color. The darker color has the most powerful genetic potential to cause white genetic annihilation, and it's all the same pigment, but the people who have the greatest genetic potential to produce the highest quantity, and they appear as the darkest people. They are the people that are most feared, and therefore want to put most color behind everything else. And see, the sterling, the, uh, what, the sterling... Silver Siviano affair brought yeah. out so much of this. Yes. It brought out a man who classifies himself as white talking about being jealous of black men. Yes. It yes. brought out uh, V. Siviano talking, you know, or was uh, Sterling talking about how she hated her color and she wanted to be white and that she used bleaching cream, Mm -hmm. and that of all of her siblings, they were all Hispanic, but she was Hispanic and black. Now, all of this came out of this man's mouth, including bringing in people into the locker room of the Clippers Mm -hmm. when the black men would be half-dressed. And he would tell strangers, you know, just almost like a slave market, look at their beautiful bodies. Right, right. So all of this offering, I say it's a cosmic offering. (laughs) All of this came out in the presence of black people and people who classify themselves as white. Not all black people, of course, but large numbers. See, I would dare say the majority of our group, black people, would prefer to not talk about racism. Correct. And this, and see, tragically, because we don't want to talk about the real cause because and this is why when black people would talk about racism on the TV or something, and the white people would start jumping up and down talking about you're playing the race car. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, Donald Sterling laid out the whole race deck. Yes, he did. <laughs> and Mark Garagos, who was on CNN, you know, he's one of their legal analysts. Mark mm-hmm. Garagos says... He hears people talking like Donald Sterling every day and all the time. Mm. So, you you see, if, if we were really wise, black people would get all the tapes, all the transcripts, and sit down in study groups and dare anyone to deny that Racism, white supremacy, is the dominant system on the planet. See, even the word America 
A-M-E-R-I-C-A, contains the phrase, I am race. (laughs) Right. See, just like the word Jesus in Ebonics is just us. Yeah, I played that clip before you came on. Yeah. (laughs) Yes, yes, you're correct. See, truth, everything is energy. Mm -hmm. And so if we begin to understand everything is energy, and this is why it cannot be destroyed and why truth will always become evident. And it will just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. The energy forces will keep pushing and pushing until people come to terms with reality. And when I was trained in psychiatry over 40 years ago, they used to tell us, see, now psychiatry doesn't want to talk about reality because then it would have to talk about racism and white supremacy. Hmm. And so the, the dominant people in the field are people who classify themselves as white. They don't want to talk about white behavior. So they are now pushing uh, pharmacological psychiatry. In other words, any complaint, just take a pill. Certainly don't decode the system of racism and white supremacy because you right. might really get well and then the system will be in difficulty. But we were trained that years ago that the role of the psychiatrist is to help people face reality even when they are afraid to do so. Mm. And so we must keep trying to find the courage and the self-respect. See, people talk about spirituality. In my view, see, there is a creative force in the universe, and you can call it God, you can call it whatever you want to call it, that is responsible for making this grand and glorious universe that has some problematic people. And I say that The creative force made black people the mothers and fathers of everybody on the planet. White people couldn't produce all the colors. Black people can produce all of the colors, starting with crystal black, highest level of black. Then next you make a mutation to albinism, and that's what white people are. They're a mutation, a genetic deficiency state. But you combine those two together, and you get all the colors in the middle. Right. So the creative force made black people the mothers and fathers of everybody on the planet. But under white supremacy, black people have been taught to hate black, which, as I said, came out in V. Siviano's, you know, about her that Donald Sterling talked about, about how she wanted to be white. Although she did have the courage to say, I'm black and Hispanic. Right. You see, so how could you be hating black people? How can you say these things, right? Absolutely. So she had the courage to, you know, to me she gets an A+. plus. Absolutely. Because her discussion was completely and totally relevant to the mm-hmm. reality of racism whether she recognized it or not. So Absolutely. This, if black people, if we can get the courage to respect ourselves, in other words, like African Liberation Day. See, liberation mm-hmm. can come in many forms. And I say what we need is the liberation of our minds and the transformation of, of our minds, beginning with the understanding of this great problem on the planet, which is a system of racism, white supremacy. Do you see that? By in, by black people learning how to respect themselves, because whatever you want to call the creative force in the universe that made us black and made the condition of crystal black, highest level black, that as long as we are in disrespect of that, we are in disrespect of the creative force. 
Absolutely. And then people want to beg and pray to the Creator, help me with this, help me with that. And I would say the Creator said, you're spitting in my eye. I made you black because black is the most critical thing on the planet. That's how come the astronomers are all talking about dark matter and the most powerful thing is the black hole. Mm. Racism and white supremacy has trained black people to hate themselves as black, to be glad that the slave masters raped our great-grandmothers, and so people don't look black and are trying to look white. And, and see, the system of racism pays the highest salaries to black people who, un, without understanding, are calling black people niggers, and mm-hmm. dogs and bitches and hoes and gangsters and thugs. See, that's the complete annihilation of black self-respect. And people think it's entertainment. Correct. No, that's the system of racism, white supremacy. You know, it's no different than racism, white supremacy said, I will not give you jobs. I will not give you significant employment. I will not give you education. I will not give you housing, but I will give you guns. And I will give you drugs. Right. And so then you can destroy yourselves based on my motivation. Wow. You know, we are challenged. I say we are challenged as the parent people on the planet to begin to use our thought faculties and to be able to analyze and to be able to develop strategies and tactics to replace the system of racism, white supremacy, with justice. See, there's no time to hate white people. That's cheap. That's a waste of time. You know, you don't you don't win a basketball game or a football game hating your opponent. You win based on your understanding of the game and the knowledge of what plays are necessary playing against the particular opponent. And so, to me, this is the challenge, the continuing our continuing struggle for liberation and understanding at ever higher levels what liberation can mean. Right, right, definitely, definitely, definitely agree with that. And these are some of the things we want to celebrate uh, also this weekend with African Liberation Day as well in Detroit. Um, you, uh, we're gonna we're gonna go to the phone lines for a few few calls um, in a few minutes here. Uh, the call in number is area code nine one four three three eight thirteen seventy five nine one four three three eight thirteen seventy five. If you have a question or comment, press the number one key to put you in queue so we can bring you on the air. Uh, we're gonna transition into the TV show Scandal in just a few minutes here. Also, um, like your voice is dropping off, so I can't hear. Oh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? That's better. Okay, um, we're going to transition into the TV show Scandal in just a few minutes here. But I wanted to ask you, um, when you when you came here to Detroit April 20th last year, you were at the Shrine of the Black Madonna uh, Church, and you did your lecture. And I played a couple of clips of, uh, of the lecture um, leading up to you coming on uh, tonight, okay? And one of the things that you said was that any person who who refuses to talk about racism and white supremacy hates black people. And I found that very interesting. Uh, you alluded to it a, a few minutes ago when you talked about how if you're on TV and you bring it up, uh, you have an African-American person brings up race, people say you're playing the race card, things like this. But even when you have people who are well-meaning Europeans who say, I don't see color, I'm colorblind, things like this, and don't want to talk about racism. Can we talk about that? Because there's a push for the colorblind society and things like that. And from my understanding, basically what that means is is that you see something wrong with the person's color, 
you don't really want to admit that there's something wrong with it, so you want to pretend like it doesn't exist. Can we talk about that for a minute? Well, uh, see, I'm only saying that, in other words, racism, the dynamic structure of racism, white supremacy. Let me just read my definition. Go ahead. Racism, white supremacy is the local and global power system and dynamic structured and maintained by persons who classify themselves as white, whether consciously or subconsciously determined, which consists of patterns of perception, logic, symbol formation, thought, speech, action, and emotional response, as conducted simultaneously in all areas of people activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, for the ultimate purpose of white genetic survival and to prevent white genetic annihilation on planet Earth, a planet upon which the vast and overwhelming majority of people are classified as non-white, black, brown, red, and yellow by white-skinned people, and all of the non-white people are genetically dominant in terms of skin coloration compared to the genetic recessive white-skinned people. So the dynamic of racism has to destroy black people for the purpose of white genetic survival, and that's genocide. And I say that is what is happening to black people. In other words, the destruction and it's the tactic or the strategy is the destruction of black men. And mm-hmm. if you destroy the men of a people, you will have destroyed the people. And we are watching and seeing this, the incarceration of black men, black males dropping out of school, fathers and husbands not in the home. Because men have to have employment to function as husbands and fathers. And so if there's high-level unemployment, then you are making necessary for people to try to find other means to bring in income or make money, and then you set up the law so that in their doing that, so-called illegal activity, they can go to jail. You can remove them from the community. So we are on a genocide slide within the system of racism, white supremacy, a system for white genetic survival. So if indeed this dynamic is going on, and everything that black people complain about are the symptoms of this dynamic, and so if people are refusing to talk about it, then even though they think they like black people, even though black people think they like black people. But if you're mm-hmm. refusing to talk about the thing that is killing black people, then we have to say that you hate black people, whether you understand it or not. Right, right. <laughs> you see, it's like, let's say as a physician, if I know that, uh, let's say, a certain food product has poison in it, but... I say, I really want to protect my reputation, and I want to be looked upon as being responsible. So I don't tell people. And so then people eat the food product and die. Can you say Francis Welsing loves the people or hates the people? Yeah, hates the people. Doesn't love them. He fails to tell the people about something that will injure and destroy and kill them. Right. See, racism, white supremacy is the highest form of terrorism Mm. and injustice that has ever been conceived on the planet. Racism as white supremacy because it's a tiny number of people that is genetic recessive that has decided it has to survive by any means necessary and that is by the destruction of people of color. Absolutely. Um, okay. If, if, 
Just a second here. If you uh, if you have a question or comment, give us a call nine one four three three eight thirteen seventy five. Press the number one key to put you in queue to bring so we can bring you on the air. We've got Dr. Wilson for a few more minutes here, um, and, and, and I'm a, we're going to go to the phone lines quickly. Now we're not going to have time for dissertations and manifestos tonight. Okay, we know you love Dr. Wilson, but questions so we can get expeditiously, and then uh, I want to get into. Uh, TV show scandal in, in, in a minute here, but we're going to try to get a couple couple calls here quickly. Um, let's see who's been on the longest. Okay, uh, we'll go. We're, we're going to the three one three area code, and then we'll go to the two one five. It looks like here. Uh, we're going to the three one three four two four area code. Let's see. Uh, okay, call on the three one three four two four. Tell us your name. Where you're calling from? Calling three one three four two four area code. Are you there? Did you hear us? Okay. Uh, okay. Let's try the other one. The three one three. Just a second here. All right. Caller three one three five eight eight. Tell us your name. Where you calling from? Good evening, Mike. How are you tonight? Hey. How you doing, Frank? You all right? Very good, sir. Pleasure to speak with uh, Miss Welsing. It's a absolute pleasure, ma'am. It's my pleasure. Um, unfortunately, I'll be out of town. I hate the fact that I won't be able to join you at the uh, uh, Charles, H. Wright, Charles H. Wright Museum on the 23rd. But so glad Absolutely. that you're coming back to Detroit again. Thank you. Okay. I look forward my to, question, to being there. Yeah, my ahead, question Frank. to you tonight is, um, with, with with white supremacy and, and, and racism itself, are are they one and the same, or are they two different entities? The same thing. Racism is white supremacy, and white supremacy is racism. There's no other racism. In other words, let's say that if I stood on the street and called people who classify themselves as white every conceivable name, that you know, that's just Frances Welsing just talking. She cannot control whether people who classify themselves as white have housing, have clothing, have shelter, have jobs, have hospitals, schools, etc. So that's just somebody talking. They don't have any power over the lives of people who classify themselves as white. And so this is what is essential. That's why I bothered to develop a definition of what racism and white supremacy is. It's the system structure for white genetic survival. It's the system mm-hmm. structure for the power equation of white power over a relative non-white powerlessness. Okay. And if oh, people you. are was, going to was... successfully, see, it's like if you are going to play chess, you have to first understand the game. If you're right. going to play checkers, you have to understand the game. And we have not understood the game. In other words, when we were in formal slavery, we thought if they would just take these chains off, if they would just end this system of slavery, that everything mm-hmm. is going to be all right. And we found out that Lincoln emancipated the enslaved African people, and then they structured laws. See, I say Reconstruction was the reconstruction of racism and white supremacy. The black people thought they were free. They thought they mm-hmm. were emancipated. But after mm-hmm. the chain came off, then laws were put in place so that black people could be controlled and demeaned. See, I tell people that at the point that Abraham Lincoln so-called emancipated the African people, that if everybody had been free, there was no color discrimination whatsoever. So everybody was mixing and blending. White people would disappear. Correct. I believe that. 
So if you ask white people, do you want to disappear, they want to tan, but they don't want to disappear. So that means that they have to, and this is why there's a whole long historical period where black men would be lynched and castrated for thinking about wanting to think about a white woman. Now they are using white women to control black men by saying, okay, now white women, you can have your ideal mate tall, dark, and handsome. But you are contributing to his confusion about the problem of racism and white supremacy. But that's very important that you have now been unleashed to engage in the confusion of the black man. Mm -hmm. Am I making Mm -hmm. myself clear? And simultaneously building, developing a mixed, so-called mixed-race group of people where the mother is white. So the black man plus the white woman produce a child. The child is medium color, not white but medium color, the white female tells the child, you're not black. And so then the child, what, develops hatred of black. If it hadn't been for this black father, I could have been all white. But that becomes, that mindset can be a useful tool for the maintenance of the system of racism, white supremacy. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Frank, thanks for calling in, okay? Thank you. Okay, brother. Take care. Hold up. All right. Um, let's try to squeeze another call quickly here. Um, call in the 252 area code. Tell us your name where you're calling from. Yes, my name is uh, Ronnie Anderson, and I'm calling from hey, Ronnie, how you North doing? Carolina. Okay, good. Yes, um, Dr. Wilson, I'm glad to uh, finally speak with you. As a matter of fact, I was watching okay. your video oh, just oh, oh, oh. Hold on, for, hold on, Ronnie, just a second. Uh, okay. Repeat your name, Ronnie, where are you calling from, okay? And talk up a little bit. Yes, Ronnie Anderson from Greenville, North Carolina. Did you hear that, Dr. Walker? Yes, just tell him to speak as loud as possible. Okay, she said speak as loud as possible. <laughs> okay. Yes, I'm coming, calling, my name is Ronnie Anderson, and I'm calling from Greenville, North Carolina. Yes, sir. Yes. I was just looking at your video just last night about um, what you're speaking on today, and it was well appreciated. But I have a question, and my question is is, is pertaining to something that uh, me and a friend of mine was speaking about today. We was in debate about it. So you're going to have to repeat that, host, because I can't hear him. I'll repeat repeat it for you, Dr. Wilson. I'll repeat it for you, Dr. Wilson. Go ahead, Ronnie. Okay. And my my question is, do Black people purposely um, support white the white racist um, supremacy system, and um, okay. if so, why okay. do they? Okay, do black people purposely support the European white supremacy system, and if so, why do they? Is that your question, Ronnie? Yes, because See, I, I would say that the vast denial. majority of black people do mm-hmm. not understand the problem as I'm describing it. Yes. Do, do you see, in, in, in other words, this is new thought, starting with Neely Fuller, who was the first person to talk about racism, white supremacy as a total system structure. And so the vast majority of black people do not understand racism, white supremacy as a system. We can call it the miseducation of black people. Carter G. Woodson wrote about the miseducation of uh, black people. Mm -hmm. And so the system of racism, white supremacy, doesn't hardly wants us to use the word racism. And this is why Donald Sterling's revelations, in spite of himself, are so important. Because people don't want to talk about racism. It's like talk about anything, talk about homosexuality, talk about anything other than racism, white supremacy, which is the key. And so the attempt is made to block an understanding of 
racism, white supremacy as a total system structure. In addition to that, black people have been taught to hate themselves. Like That's if right. I develop three pills, the first pill will turn you white the next day. The second pill will give you long, straight hair. The third pill would give you so-called white features. I would be the wealthiest person on the planet within a matter yeah. of seven days because all of the people of color on the planet have been taught to hate white. This came out, as we said earlier, in the Donald Sterling dialogue about V. Sibiano. He said, she said she hated being black, that she wanted to be white. Look at all yes, the right. people walking around with long, straight hair that they buy. Look at the people who are bleaching their skin. And it's not only black people, it's people in Asia, people in India. Mm-hmm. Wherever there are people of color who have been psychologically damaged by racism, white supremacy. And so... Black people are supporting, not only that, the system gave black people the image of God as a white man. Thank you. I'm glad you bring that up. This was one of the cleverest things that the system did. And this was given to us when we were in chains. And said, here, my image is God. And black people were being beaten and raped and mistreated for hundreds of years. And with the concept, oh, maybe there's a white person, God in heaven, who's going to come and save me. Well, this is a deep brain computer implant. Yes, it is. Jesus, if he was a historical figure in the part of the world, Middle East and Northern Africa, he could not have been white. Billy Graham even says Jesus could not have been white if he was a historic figure Mm. in that part of the world. But if you are going to hold people in oppression, first you deny them a deep level of education so they're not reading and reading every book and searching for information and knowledge. And so you keep them in a state of non-learning, and then you tell them that the image of God, who they should be worshiping, who they should be looking to to solve their problem, is the same image of the oppressor. That's right. So this is what has been done to us, And the challenge is for us to respect ourselves at a sufficient level so we begin to think. See, this is why the system has black people playing a lot of loud music that is sensory overload so the brain can't function. Mm. Just boom de boom de boom You see, and that's supposed to be entertainment. Yep, but yep. it also cuts off effective thinking. So, oh. you know, again, by us, you know, by black people thinking and, and, first of all, beginning to deeply respect ourselves as black people, that this is key, nothing without self-respect. See, self-respect was what allowed for the Civil Rights Revolution. When the black people were determined to oppose the laws of segregation and they went up against horses and dogs, police dogs, and fire hoses and gave their lives, well, the system said, wait a minute, we can't allow this to continue. The people could not have made that step if they didn't respect themselves and were not willing to give their lives. As Martin Luther King said, if you haven't found that thing for which you're willing to give your life, your life is not worth living, meaning if That's your right. self-respect has not reached a sufficient level. And so from that point on, then the system said, no, we can transform. See, black people came out of that movement 
talking about black pride, black right. self-respect, black dignity, black is beautiful, black power. And that had to be annihilated. And it was annihilated by telling black people they could be movie stars, but then they would be trashy images, using you know. drugs, cursing at one another, shooting and killing one another, and then bring it up to, you know, musical entertainment and have all kind of trashy language and black people calling themselves trashy names. See, you can't be a bitch and a whore and a dog and have self-respect. Right, it's exactly. impossible. you got one brain computer, and if the brain computer is dialed towards bitch, whore, gangster, thug, freak, that's a complete annihilation of self-respect. You can get the people to do anything. And all you have to do is turn on the TV and just look at some of the commercials that black people are in. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, thanks, brother, for your call. Thanks for your call. Thank you. Good all right. Um, okay, thanks, brother. Um, it, 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 Dr. Wilson, we're, we're going to wrap up here in a few minutes, uh, 15 past the hour. I can hear you, sir. Uh, oh, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, if you speak up, it's almost like your voice drops away. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I was looking at my notes here. Okay. Uh, 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 we're going to end this segment about 15 past the hour in about 11 okay. minutes here. Um, I wanted to transition and ask you about the TV show Scandal. I know you were on the, the Carl Nelson show on the radio talking about that uh, a few months ago, but the, the TV show Scandal on ABC, for those that don't know, uh, it has become a, a pop cultural phenomenon. Okay, um, it, a lot of people find out about it through social media, and at the center of it, you have Olivia Pope, who is a quote unquote powerful African American woman. And now, originally, she was involved in one relationship with a, a white male, who, who's the president, President Fitz, fictional president. Now she's involved in two relationships with white white men, President Fitz, and I think his name is Jake. Okay, w- what do you make of of the popularity of Scandal and especially the support that it's getting from African-American women. I, 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 I just don't understand this. Uh, can you help me? Maybe I need to come see you for some, for some psychiatric help. <laughs> see, again, if you understand the system, mm-hmm. and it's just like I've been saying, to hold people in oppression, you have to destroy their self-respect. Yes, yes. You have to destroy their self-respect. Yes. And so basically, uh, scandal is, you know, in other words, for the hundreds of years we were in formal slavery. You Mm -hmm. had the slave master with his black concubines, plural concubines, Yes. This is Thomas Jefferson and Sally Hemings. But mm-hmm. what has happened is that the system has gone so far in the destruction of black men so that 70% of the black households are single parent, unmarried, women don't have men. Mm-hmm. Do you see? And so women, it's the nature of women to want to have a man with power, a protector. And that is what is missing from the lives of black women. In the system of racism, white supremacy, because the man has been destroyed. And it's essential to destroy the black man because he is the threat to white genetic survival. And so what do we see being pushed? Black men, you want to be gay, you want to be homosexual. This is not to put down the person who says they're gay. Right. This is not homosexual bashing because medicine doesn't even have the answers as to why we're seeing an epidemic in the effeminization of black men. But I say it also has to do 
with the removal of large numbers of men and incarcerating them. Not only if you incarcerate them for prolonged periods of time, large numbers begin to have sex with each other. Yes. That's understood. Do you, do you see? But all of it is a part of the symphony of the destruction of black people. Do you see? So the biggest thing in the news next to Sterling, Donald Sterling, and his revelations was what? A gigantic, tall black man, football player. Yes. <laughs> embracing and kissing a white man. I was about to ask that question, yes. <laughs> do, you, do you see what I'm saying? In other words, pieces of the puzzle mm-hmm. of white genetic survival and the things that have to be done to the black collective, male and female. Do, do you see? So, I mean, it's got to be painful to our ancestors. Mm-hmm. If they're looking down, and seeing black women worshiping, being the concubine for a white man. Right, right. Willing. And glorifying in it. You see, but again, to the extent that racism, white supremacy is not understood. Somebody, I got a call from somebody because I was criticizing scandal, and they said, "You're just jealous." <laughs> God bless. Do you understand? I mean, but it really is. It's just the our absence of understanding. It's just like I looked at a black man. I'm driving, looking at a black man crossing the street, and he had his pants down, but almost below his buttocks. Mm-hmm. This is a grown black man, mm-hmm. where people yeah. don't even understand what that means. Mm-hmm. I say that comes from father hunger and really wanting to have male substance injected into the rectum, if not the mouth. Mm. Mm. Is is, is that dealing with prison culture at all? Because from my understanding, you know. Yes, all of it is tied. But in other words, see, it's, it's like if your body is deficient in vitamin A, Okay. It might occur to your brain, I need to go I need to get some greens. I need mm-hmm. to go buy some greens. See greens have vitamin A. Okay. So your brain will guide you. You you know, when you think, Okay, let me go and get some greens, you're not thinking, I'm deficient in vitamin A. My body is telling my brain to go and get food substance that has vitamin A. So we have the tragedy under white supremacy of black male masculine deficiency because fathers have been taken out of the home. Males grow up just looking at their mothers put on earrings, fix their hair, but father absence. And so male children, I've had male children say, you know, parent will bring the child to the psychiatrist and say he won't study or he won't do his homework and to have a little child 10 years old tell the doctor Dr. Welsing I think I could do my homework if I just had an official father wow wow do you see or another child say if I had a father Dr. Welsing he at least could explain to me what goes on under the hood of a car. Hmm. See, that makes the, makes me as a psychiatrist want to fall on the floor and cry. Wow. Do you see, because the children are feeling the pain of the attack, and we are not yet in sufficient number understanding the attack, or we are wanting... You see, it's like scandal is a variation on the theme of black women going to church and wanting Jesus' white man to love them. (laughs) 
Well, but, but, but to take it a step further, and we're about to wrap it up here, I'm going I'm to give people the details of African Liberation Day, how you can come see the system well, in Detroit. let me just throw in so oh, the oh, women won't be hurt, go ahead. or the black men, for that matter, looking at porn. Uh, well, I don't, I don't get the connection. To say that again, what would you say about looking at porn? <laughs> what you say? In other words, I said black women going to church and wanting Jesus to love them, white male. Okay. Do you see which is what scandal is all about? Love me. Okay, white right. White male who has power. Right. <laughs> While a black man is thinking. You know, just listen to, look at all the basketball players and the football players and the rap star. I have to have a white woman. Okay, okay. <laughs> see, I you got see you. what I'm saying? In other words, it's just what has happened to us, black men, black women, under the system of racism, white supremacy. Absolutely. And, you know, and to take it, to take it one step further very quickly, even worse, that possibly even worse or just as worse is African American women comparing to Jesus, trying to see how he measures up to Jesus. I, I don't know if you've dealt with people like that. Wait a minute, say that again. I'm... I said I said, so, so the other thing, to take it a step further, is even worse or just as worse is African American women yeah. comparing their husband, their boyfriend or what have you to Jesus. To see if he, you know, because they, because some women are taught to go find a man like Jesus, and they compare their boyfriend, husband, what have you, to Jesus, okay, mm-hmm. okay. And, and then they're disappointed when he doesn't measure up. Well, <laughs> I don't know if you've dealt with people like that before, but I've, I've, I've talked to women like that. Okay. Okay. Yes, so that's that's something big. See, but well, if, it's like ahead. if we are able to lay all of this information out, mm-hmm. it's like drawing a circle, and the circle represents a system of racism and white supremacy. It's like the edge the, and the straight edge pieces of a puzzle. And so yes. then you begin to see where all of the pieces fit. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson is going to be in Detroit once again, Friday, May 23rd, at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History in celebration of African Liberation Day. So this is put on by the African Liberation Day Planning Committee in the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. Uh, it's, it's Friday, May 23rd, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Tickets are $15.00 or you can get two tickets for $25. Dr. Welsing is going to be dropping this type of information on us. I'm telling you right now, bring a pen and a pad with you to take notes, okay? When you come see the sister, please bring a pen and a pad to take notes. For more information and to get tickets, call Brother Paul Taylor at 313-477-1146, 313-477-1146, or Brother Greg McKenzie at 313-578-1300. 313-578-1300. And um, there are festivities on Saturday. Also, Saturday is free for you to attend. It's 10, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the same location, Charles H. Wright Museum. We have this flyer on our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. So check it out there. We hope to see you there. And, and sister, I, I just want to thank you once again for taking time out of your busy schedule to come on. We love talking to you. And you, you always have a wealth of information to help us navigate this system, understand what's going on. And, you know, I talk about at the African History Network how right knowledge corrects wrong behavior. So, you know, you are the epitome of that. Right knowledge corrects wrong behavior. Well, thank you. And uh, we're all going to keep our shoulder to the wheel and make certain that we replace racism, white supremacy with justice so there can be peace on the planet and the maximal development of all people. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, look, sister, you have a great night, and I will see you Friday, May 23rd in, D- 